Welcome to a new episode of the Geopolitical Puzzle. For this episode, my guest is Dr. Simona Grano, Senior Lecturer at the Institute of Asian and Oriental Studies at the University of Zurich in Switzerland. She also co-authored the book China United States Competition Impact on Small and Middle Powers Strategic Choices. In this episode, we discuss with Simona about the relationship between Switzerland and China, how Bern handles relations between the United States and China, additionally, what is Switzerland's position regarding the recent elections in Taiwan. Hello, Simona, how are you? Hi, Juan Carlos, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very well, how are you? I'm doing well. It's a pleasure to have you today in this episode in connection between Zurich and Boston. Simona, in this episode, we will discuss Switzerland's uh, relationship with China and everything that this situation implies from an international affair perspective. As we know, Switzerland is a neutral and very important country at the same time. I read some papers and articles that mentioned that Switzerland is adopting a series of strategies focus on Asian countries. So to get into the context, what is the role of Switzerland, you know, as an important and neutral country in international affairs, diplomacy, and geopolitics towards Asian countries? Well, so first of all, Switzerland in general maintains diplomatic relations with almost all countries and historically has actually served as a neutral, as you said, intermediary and, of course, as a host to many major international treaty conferences. So um, basically, Switzerland is a small state, but it is also not so small, as you said before, when it comes to its financial and diplomatic stages. And it is also a neutral state. And of course, neutrality is important in this context because it's one of the main principles of its foreign policy that basically dictates that Switzerland should not involve itself in the military affairs of third parties, right? And of course, neutrality in this sense is meant to guarantee independence for Switzerland. But even more important than that, I think, to ensure credibility for the country, for the kind of role it wants to play as a host to a myriad of international organizations. And because Switzerland wants to actually offer and continue to do so its good services, it remains committed to act as a bridge among countries. And just yesterday, to give you an example, our Minister of Foreign Affairs and Federal Counselor Ignacio Cassis was visiting China, Beijing, after visiting many other Asian states, South Korea, the Philippines and India among them, to invite these parties to a summit that should be organized by Switzerland in the coming year for peace in Ukraine, to which, of course, Switzerland would like to see China participate and also use its way to convince Russia to do the same and influence geopolitics in the direction of peace. And this, of course, would be a huge diplomatic success for Switzerland, although it does not look likely at the moment that China will accept the invitation. Let's dig a little bit uh, into China and Switzerland, eh, Simona. I read some of your papers, such as strategic choices for Switzerland in the U.S.-China competition. And I found a very interesting paragraph. The importance of China of Switzerland has grown steadily in the last 50 years, particularly in the previous 20 years. Why is that? What is the main reason? Well, first of all, I think that, you know, because of the neutrality policy that we talked about briefly and the early recognition, many people don't know this, but Switzerland was one of the first Western countries to actually recognize the People's Republic of China and not the Republic of China, Taiwan, already back in 1950. So because of these early contacts, actually, Swiss economic relations with China were already much more pronounced than those of other European states already during the Cold War. And of course, because of this, the Dependence is even greater today. So the PRC is at the moment Switzerland's third most important trading partner after the EU and the US. And Switzerland has, in fact, a series of firsts with China. So, for example, in 2014, Switzerland was the first country in continental Europe to actually sign a free trade agreement with China, which needs to be renewed. This was another reason for our minister to, you know, visit Beijing yes. yesterday. Yes, I, I read the article yesterday about it. It's a very strong trade agreement, by the way. 
It's a very strong trade agreement, of course, and also one of the few, but we'll talk about human rights later, that does not have a human rights clause. And this was also, by the way, the free trade agreement. In the discussion that took place at Davos in January in Switzerland, we had the World Economic Forum, where Li Qiang also took place. And there, of course, also discussions took place about renewing this trade agreement. And for the two countries, it would be very important to renew this in 2025, because this would also mark, it's a symbolic date, the 75th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between China and Switzerland, right? Mm -hmm. But let me just conclude. There's a couple of more first that I want to tell you about. In 2016, sure. when Switzerland joined, for example, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, and later on in 2019, another first, Switzerland signed a memorandum of understanding with China to intensify cooperation on investment and project financing in third markets along the routes of the BRI. So Switzerland, to conclude, really has a much closer relationship with China than other European countries. That's fantastic. Uh, Simona, before I, I jump into the next question, briefly, you just mentioned investment. I would like to ask you, what kind of goods or products or kind of merchandise China and Switzerland exchange? Yes. Okay. So, uh, well, Switzerland's major exports, for example, to, to China are mostly machinery and equipment, uh, chemical, pharmaceutical products, but of course, also luxury products like watches, textiles or apparel, among other things. Oh, interesting. Simona, Switzerland and the United States have enjoyed a relationship of friendship since the 19th century. Both countries share values and democracy, the rule of law, and respect for human rights. Actually, in 1822, uh, Switzerland opened its first consulate in New York and D.C. How does Switzerland handle this tension or rivalry between the United States and China? Well, so as you, Switzerland is a small state, as we said, and of course it is squeezed like many other in this China-US competition, which is increasing. And, and it is like many other small states trying to balance out the choice between security, national security with economic prosperity. So it's a country that, like many more in this world, is increasingly being torn between wanting to be to continue to be perceived as, as, as Switzerland does want to, as a bridge builder among third countries. But at the same time, it's coming under pressure because it is dealing with increasing demands among parts of the Swiss public and the parliament for a more, I would say, unequivocal positioning firmly on the side of like-minded states like the U.S. and more critical of China for, for example, its human rights violations. And I think this pressure going forward will really be increasing and it will put more well, present more problems to Switzerland while it tries to maintain its independence. This is already becoming visible. I give you a small example for for Swiss companies, ABB, the Swiss uh, Swedish Engineering Group, which has also operations in China, and these are being examined by two U.S. Congress committees dedicated to basically investigating security threats and risks posed by Beijing. Because U.S. legislators say that ABB is not sufficiently addressing security concerns about. China made cranes that use ABB technology that could potentially be used to carry out espionage activities. And I foresee these kind of problems will increase for Switzerland and its companies in the future. Diplomacy will play an important role in this kind of particular issue. Simona, as you mentioned before, Switzerland was one of the first Western countries to recognize the Popular Republic of China in 1950 and has maintained extensive bilateral exchange with Beijing since 1980s. As we talked before, China is highly questioning over human rights issues. Does the Swiss government have a clear position about this matter? Because I read some interesting article how Swiss-Chinese relations are weathering geopolitical storms and they were you part of these articles? And for example, there are sanctions from UK, from the United States and the European Union, of course. What is your viewpoint about it? Well, I mean, of course, rhetorically, at least the Swiss government has a position on human rights. And of course, it, it is critical of what is going on in China. But as I said, rhetorically, because, well, China and Switzerland have also established a human rights dialogue since 91. And this dialogue actually was suspended by China in 2018 because Switzerland openly voiced criticism of China's human rights violations and co-signed a letter at the UN calling for the closure of the Uyghur camps in Xinjiang, right? So the dialogue actually, interestingly, has been now restarted in 2023 in the summer. But apart from this, um, I would say, small criticism on the part of Switzerland, 
Actually, Switzerland really has done a lot to promote economic interests with China and human rights concerns, in my opinion, have remained secondary issues. Yes. And I think this is because officials are holding back on these issues for fear of jeopardizing their relationship with China, because there is a sort of, I would say, sort of widespread belief among especially maybe more conservative parties in, in Switzerland that you should play nice with China to keep the relationship going. So prioritize economic and political relations and really hold back on moral judgments towards China. As you mentioned in this article, the Swiss aren't naive. So which is a, is a very good statement. Speaking about, you know, economics and geopolitics, we recently had elections in Taiwan where President Lai ching te was elected. China still claims on situations in the island and the U.S. sees Taiwan as a great ally. So what is your opinion? What is the impact of the recent elections? Let me give you an example on this as well to understand. There were two elections recently and very, two very different reactions that came out of Switzerland. So one of them was in Bangladesh, where the autocratic head of government was confirmed in office again. And according to the U.S., actually, the election was not free and nor fair. Uh, but, but the Swiss ambassador took part to her swearing of, of the head of state, uh, swearing in ceremony, and congratulated her on Facebook. But at the same time, the Taiwanese elections took place and a new president was elected, as you said, lighting the, the election was actually described by observers as being exemplary, right, and free and fair. And even the losing candidate actually acknowledged the defeat. U.S. Secretary of State Lincoln also congratulated Taiwanese via X. And Switzerland, what did it do? Well, they did not say a word about it. And even the Trade Office of Swiss Industry, which is basically the unofficial representation of Switzerland in Taiwan, kept the democratic vote of 24 million Taiwanese very silent on Facebook because, of course, Switzerland does not recognize the island republic as an independent state. And I would say is much more cautious than any uh, than many other countries in Europe in regards to Taiwan for fear of angering China. Hey, Simona, is there anything that you would like to add? How you see the the months to come, or how you see this year in terms to from the geopolitical international affair perspective from Switzerland to China to United States? Now we are having the conflict in Ukraine. What is your opinion before wrapping up? I think I will leave you with three variables that, in my opinion, will actually put more strain, possibly on the relationship between China and Switzerland. The first variable is really the U.S.-China competition and how this intensifying economic and technology war between the U.S. and China will develop, because this really means for a small country, which is export oriented like Switzerland, will mean that geopolitical polarization will grow. And of course, Switzerland will be placed under more uh, strain to stick to trade with one or the other major power and as a consequence to be put as a disadvantage when dealing with the other major power, right? And the second thing is, of course, how China's own internal economic situation will develop. That will also, of course, have an impact for uh, economic relations between uh, Switzerland and China. And the third but I think this is not a likely scenario, uh, thank God, is a possible conflict over the island of Taiwan, which would, in this case, in my opinion, force Switzerland to implement sanctions. But I do not think that this is actually a likely scenario at the moment, at least. Yeah, we hope not. Simona, where can people contact you? Well, I work at the University of Zurich and I'm quite easily foundable at my email or also, you know, on, on uh, formerly Twitter X uh, by, you know, s searching for me as Simona Grano. Simona, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Juan Carlos. It was a pleasure. Oh, no, it's a pleasure. I'm Juan Carlos Giraldo from Boston, United States. Thank you so much, everyone.